Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video on low power design. Uh, so far we've been talking about how to reduce the power consumption in your Arduino project and I've been taking a measurement of the current draw from the system voltage. So the actual voltage that the microcontroller is running at which would be either 3.3 volts or 5 volts. But what if your supply voltage is something else, something higher than your working voltage? Well, you'll need a power supply to step that voltage down, and that's what I want to talk about in this video. So let's take a closer look at what I've got going on over here. So when you step your supply voltage down to your working voltage, you want to make sure that the power supply itself, just to do its job, uses as little current as possible. Uh, and what you're looking at here is an evaluation of three linear regulators for a new project I'm working on using the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. Uh, as many of you know, that, that module has some pretty high peak current, so I needed a supply that can handle that, that peak current, but also be as low power as possible for when we're in a complete deep sleep state. Uh, and the idea of this project would be to be sleeping most of the time, wake up, get the data out, receive data, and then go back to sleep. So a linear regulator for this application is perfect for that and I plan on having the input voltage be pretty close to the output voltage to keep the efficiencies uh, up as, as much as possible. So what we've got here though is three very common linear regulators. In fact the first one I bet most of you have already and by the way these are all fixed voltage regulators meaning that there is no uh, resistor feedback network. They're all 3.3 volt fixed output regulators. They're also all hooked up exactly the same. I've got a 10 microfarad capacitor on both the input and output rails with a 0.1 microfarad capacitor in parallel with the 10 microfarad capacitor. Okay, uh, so the first one here I want to look at is the LD1117V33. Uh, and this is very common. It can do 800 milliamps with a max input voltage of 15 volts. So let's hook that up and see what the no load current draw of that regulator is. So we have absolutely no load on this whatsoever. Let's also make sure that, that it can hold 3.3 volts when there is no load. So let's, uh, let's take a quick look at that. Okay, so we only have that first regulator hooked up and you can see that with a 5 volt input, we're pulling about 5.3 milliamps, and that's with no load. So that's just the current that this supply or this linear regulator needs just to run. Uh, we do have a nice clean output voltage of 3.3 volts. Uh, and by the way, I did load all these supplies down and I checked them no load, full load uh, with the scope, and they look uh, stable as well. So I mean, the meter could be deceiving if there was a lot of ripple on that output or something like that. So uh, yeah, that looks pretty good, but you know that is way that that quiescent current draw is much much higher than uh, than anything we could deal with for this project. So uh, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the next one is the LF three three ABV. Uh, this one can do five hundred milliamps with a sixteen volt max input voltage. So that's pretty good. Uh, and you can see up on the meter, we've uh, got much better results here. Uh, this one's only pulling uh, about 500 microamps or uh, 0.491 milliamps. So that's that's pretty good. That's a lot better than 5 milliamps. Uh, the output voltage is also uh, looking pretty good. We've got 3.27 volts. Um, that is um, a, that is still within spec. It's not per, a perfect 3.3 volts, but it is still within spec. So that's that's pretty good as well. Uh, by the way, these are LDO regulators, low dropout voltage regulators. So they, um, so we can run that input voltage pretty close to the output voltage, which is another huge advantage here, especially when we're dealing with uh, batteries and they just sl slowly drain down, you know, and then eventually they're going to cut out. But uh, these are extremely low dropout voltage regulators. In fact, you could check the data sheet for uh, these last two here and they've got really good uh, performance specs. Uh, okay, anyway, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this next one is the TC1262-3.3VAB. Uh, it can also do 500 milliamps, but it can only do 6 volts max on its input voltage. So you got to keep an eye on that. 
Uh, but when you look up at the meter, you can see it has incredibly low quiescent current draw. So only 70 microamps or 0 0.07 milliamps. Um, its output voltage is a clean 3.3 volts, no load, so no issues there. Um, it also has the uh, same pinout as the LV LF33ABV, so these two are interchangeable from a pinout standpoint, and that is something you have to watch with these linear regulators. Sometimes, you know, you know manufacturers have different pinouts, and even though the packages look exactly the same, they're not going to drop in and uh, just work. So they sometimes put the, the V in ground and uh, V out pins, they mix match those all up. So keep an eye on that. Uh, but anyway, this one has incredible performance. So uh, if I had a five volt input or a 4.2 volt single cell uh, lithium battery input, um, this would be a perfect regulator. But for like a nine volt battery or something like that, hmm, might have to go to the LF33 ABV. Um, and also one thing to keep in mind is that these are higher current uh, devices, uh, but if you go to like a, a 150 milliamp uh, LDO or something like that, a linear regulator, like uh, the one I put on this little, uh, this little lithium battery board here, this has a tiny little 150 milliamp regulator on it and it has an extremely low quiescent current draw, I think something like 20 microamps, so much better than any of these. Um, but since we need to handle those peak currents of the ESPD266, we're forced to go to a, a, a heavier duty linear regulator like this. And uh, some of you might be wondering, well, why not use a DC to DC regulator? And uh, there's no simple answer to that question, whether you should go to a DC to DC regulator versus a linear regulator, because it always depends on your specific project and your needs. Uh, for what I'm doing here, you know, sleeping most of the time and waking up, getting in, getting out, this will work just fine. And also my V in is going to be pretty close to my V out, you know, at least that's my plan. So the efficiencies aren't going to be too bad. But if my V in was much higher than my V out and I was also uh, transmitting or communicating with the ESP8266 for a longer period of time, then any of the quiescent current draw savings that we're getting while we're sleeping would just go out the window because you're gonna lose it all in your inefficiencies. So, you know, that's probably, uh, we could probably have a completely separate series of videos on power supply design as well. Maybe we can, uh, maybe we could spin that off. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to give you a quick video here showing you, um, a couple cool linear regulators here. They're super easy to use, they're cheap, and they just drop in and work. So um, anyway, keep an eye out for that board. By the way, that ESP8266 board is going to just work with my uh, little Arduino cheater board. It's gonna plug in right here, have a nice little linear regulator, some level shifters. Uh, the ESP8266 board will plug right on top here. It'll also have the NRF 24L01+. Plus. Uh, so anyway, keep an eye out for that. And uh, that's uh, a little quick video on uh, on uh, power supply uh, for uh, power supply design for low power applications. Uh, hopefully that at least helps you a little bit. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching.